Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This morning, the Most High, we get up to say Shema, Israel, Adonai, Eloheinu, Adonai, Akai. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. And bless your name.
this morning, the Most High. We get up this morning seeking Him first, the kingdom of the Most High, and all His righteousness, knowing that all things should be added unto us. Therefore, we come seeking, knocking, and asking because of who He is. He is the Most High God. Then you got to be like Ruth and Naomi this morning. Wherever you go, there I will go. Hallelujah. You got to get to the point where right now we're in the feast of unleavened bread. But at the same time, we're counting up the Omer. And one thing about Hebrews, we count up. We don't count down like in the world. <laughs> 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. We count up. Hallelujah. One. Two, because you expecting something. We counting up, and we're going to be counting up the Omer for the next 49 days, 50 days to shovel oak. I know in the church you think it's Pentecost, and that's how you celebrate it, but it's actually shovel oak. So we're counting up in expectation. I don't know about you, but I'm expecting the unexpected by faith because some unexpected things have showed up in my life and I'm thankful for the most high for it because when you've been praying as long as I've been praying and the most high has come to say, guess what? It's time to expect the unexpected by faith as you count up the Omer, as you celebrate the feast of unleavened bread. I'm a rewarder to them that diligently seek me. So don't you get weary and well doing. You're going to reap this harvest if you faint not. And it's harvest time. I'm talking about the Israelites. I'm talking about the Hebrews knew when to count up, when to expect the Most High to show up. So I have moved from experience to expectation. Hallelujah. And bless your name this morning. You should be excited. I love the Most High spring feast because they seem to overlap each other. It seems like you're walking in the double all the time. You be like, okay, I'm trying to do the Feast of Unleavened Bread. What you mean count? Yes. I'm going to doubly bless you because you got a double portion coming your way. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Don't you know you're doubly fruitful? I will multiply Everything you put your hands to, you just go ahead and keep counting up, walking in the unexpected. Come on, keep counting up, because I want you to expect some things in this season of your life. This is your set time for favor, because you want to know why? It's your season for grace and favor. You walking out the double. I'm talking about the double portion. I'm talking about the most high. It's opening the windows of heaven and pouring you out a blessing that you don't don't have room to receive. Expect the unexpected by faith. Expect the unexpected by your obedience. Amen. He said, if you would just be obedient over a few things, I'll make you a ruler over many. And it's time for your many. It's time for your abundance. It's time for your overflow. It's time for you to walk out this thing like never before. Because it's your set time for favor. Y'all better come on and say he favored me. I'm blessed and highly favored. He favored me. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Come on in here, Patricia. We're in the feast of unleavened bread. As we count up the Omer on day two, every day at sunset, that begins a new day. And what you want to do is take the book of Psalms, Psalms 119, and you read eight verses every day. And the Most High will bless your obedience. So come on, it's time to count. I'm so glad he taught us how to number our days. The word says to teach us how to number our days. I'm talking about the song of Moses in the book of Psalms chapter 90. You better know that the Holy Ghost is just not fall on Pentecost. Amen. The church as we know in Acts chapter 2 did not start in Acts chapter 2. It started out Mount Sinai with the giving of the Torah and the Torah is spirit. In the beginning, the spirit hovered over the waters. What you say? Oh, no, the spirit didn't just show up at Pentecost. 
the spirit, which is the Torah, was given out on Shava Oat. Oh Lord, it's something about being in relationship with him. Shava Oat. So Pentecost is just your type and shadow of what had already been done. Mm. Hallelujah. So when you begin to read the scripture and you can remiss and go back to the Tanakh and find yourself. Ooh, I'm finding myself. And find yourself. You begin to understand the word of the Most High. Amen. Y'all thought the church began in Acts chapter 2. You better know what called out mean. You better know what he did in the beginning. He called them out. And just like he's doing with you right now. He's calling you out. One by one. He's calling you out. To have you to walk in obedience. To his Torah. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. He's calling you out now. Come on. Uh, come out from among them. Come out from among them. He's calling you out now. You're the called out ones. Ooh, and it's something about the called out ones. They begin to be obedient to the word of the Most High. They begin to get knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. They begin to do the greater works. Because Yeshua said, greater works shall you do. So live it out now. Ooh, Lord. <laughs> Counting up in expectation. That means you're about to receive something. What you say? Mm. See, when you count up and not down, 10, 9, 8, you know you ain't expecting nothing. But when you count up, whoo, 1, 2, 3, 4, you, as the days get closer, you expecting something. And the Most High is saying, guess what? I'm about to give it to you. Good measures, pressed down, shaking together, running over. I'll cause men to give it to your bosom. It's your time. It's your time. So count. You know, some people in the world, they say, you know, you know, you can count on so-and-so, and you can count on mm. this, and, and you can count on that. And maybe you can't count on them. Mm. <laughs> but when you count on the Omer, oh, Lord, you can count on the Most High God. You can count on that you're about to receive something. You can count on the windows of heaven being opened. Mm. You can count on that he will make a way for you out of no way. You can count on that he will make a way of escape for you. You can count on that he will open a door that no man can shut, and he will shut a door that no man can open. You can count on the Most High as you're counting up. And expectation. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. For the first time in my like the first time in my life, I could really count on somebody. And it's amazing. When you can truly count on somebody. And the most high is sending you favor now. Because mm -hmm. it's your Caesar. Hallelujah. He said, I will sit you. Before me. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Because of your obedience. You didn't think you was going to be obedient for this long. And not be rewarded. And my word says. I'm a rewarder to them. That diligently seek me. Dr. J. You meditate. On my word day and night. You sacrifice. To find the right word. To pour out on the people. And you don't think I'm going to reward you. <laughs> I'm a rewarder. To them. That diligently seek me. And you know what? You can count on it. Mm -hmm. So keep counting. You can count on it. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Uh, I'm so excited this morning. I'm so excited. I love it when he just kind of like shift us around. Because Pastor Lucinda, you really thought we were going to go back to that becoming a leader. I know we're going to get there, but we're in a feast day right now. We're in the feast of unleavened bread. We're counting the omer. We got to teach the people. You can't just have folks counting and they don't know why they're counting. So we're going to teach counting of the omer this morning. Hallelujah. Because you got something to be whoop, excited about. You got something something to expect in these next 50 days as you count up to shovel mm. the great giving of his Torah. You in the same place that the children of Israel was in. You done celebrated Passover. He done brought you out of Egypt. Now you're in the wilderness. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Welcome to your wilderness experience, but you better count up. 
in expectation. Can you imagine the Most High pulling you out and then saying, count up, count up, count up. Because in a 50 days, I'm going to give you something. I'm going to give you something. Count up. And you can count on it. Because it's coming from the Most High God. You guys right now should be going crazy. I should see hearts all over this thing flying just because you can't say nothing. I should see hearts everywhere because you're walking in the unexpected. Mm -hmm. You're just going to start running into blessings. You're going to have a head-on collision with blessings. You're going to be like, oop, I done ran into another blessing. Oop, and if, even if you're back up, you're going to back into a blessing. I'm talking about right now where the most high is at right now. Thank you, Most High. This is your season for grace and favor. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what you feel like. I don't care what you're faced with. This is your season for grace and favor. Just don't get in your way. Don't get in your way. Don't second guess what the Most High has already given you. Because you know we can do that. Mm -mm. This just seemed too good to be true. Uh -uh, something got to be wrong. Something ain't right. Don't sabotage the blessing <laughs> because of some things you might have gone through. Don't sabotage the blessing because, you know, you just want to try to figure that thing out. The Most High says, I'm going to need you to walk by faith and not by sight. And I'm just going to need you to count. Mm. Count up an expectation. Walk by faith and not by sight. Woo-wee. Don't you know he give us brand new mercies every day? He gives us brand new mercies every day. And this is the day that the Lord has made. As we count, you better come on and rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day Amen. that the Lord has made. So come on and rejoice and be glad in it as we count the omer. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hallelujah. Teach us how to number our days. Ooh, I love him. I love him. I love him. I love him. I love him more today than I did on yesterday. I love him because Torah is teachings and instructions. It's not law. Amen. And so when you really think about it, you're like, wow, ain't nobody ever taught me how to count. I never knew what season I really was in. I was just guessing. But now you know you're in the right place at the right time. Yes. You have arrived to the right place at the right time. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. And I'm sure enough walking in expectation of what the Most High is doing in our lives. He's a rewarder. He said, tell them again, because I know sometimes they get discouraged. Don't you get discouraged in well-doing? You're going to reap this harvest if you faint not. Because he's a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Amen. Hallelujah. But you got to be diligent. You got to be consistent. You got to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the word of the most high. You got to be like a tree. Planted by a river of water. I shall not be moved by what I see. I shall not be moved by my emotions. I shall not be moved. I will stand on the word of the Most High. From Genesis to Revelation. I won't faint. Because now is not the time to faint. Hallelujah and bless your name Hallelujah and bless your name Come on in here Pastor Wagner He's teaching us how to number our days As we count the Omer mm -hmm. I, I can hear you Pastor Lucinda saying You been telling me today we're not even going to do Becoming a leader No we got to put that on the back burner for this morning Because a true priest Prophet Teacher Rabbi, will teach the clean from the unclean, the holy from the unholy, and the feast days, the moldings of the most high. So we're going to teach you how to count this morning as you're counting up in expectation. 
because you are expecting the unexpected by faith and you don't want to walk into the Omer with no understanding. So tired of folks telling us to do stuff with no understanding? Like, yeah, we count the Omer. <laughs> but why are we counting it? I don't know. We just doing it. <laughs> they ain't tell us why. But I, I see them posting that we're supposed to read Psalms 119, eight verses every day. But I don't know why we're doing it. What? <laughs> How you going to teach folks that don't give them no understanding? Now, knowledge is information, right? Mm -hmm. Understanding is comprehension. And wisdom is application. So I come to give you the knowledge, understanding, and wisdom on how to count this morning. What you say, Most High? Yes. Because I'm a teacher. And by now, you should be teachers. That's what Paul said. Ooh, I get to talk about Paul today. But some of us need to go back to the first oracles of the Most High God. When Yeshua stepped on the seat, he taught them to seek the kingdom and all its righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. He taught them that salvation was a lifestyle. So he began to walk them through the feast days. He began to bring it to their remembrance. He began to tell them, now this is the way you pray. Hallelujah and bless your name. It's nothing like being taught how to walk. Because your confession must match your conduct. You can't just be talking and your walk don't back up what you say. Hallelujah. And bless your name this morning, the most high. Oh, most high. Oh, Lord. I come lifting up everyone on Facebook live this morning. We have moved from experience to expectation. We thank you. For the counting of your omer and the feast of unleavened bread that you would have us to walk in the double. I thank you, thank you, thank you that you're opening the windows of heaven and you're pouring us out blessings that we don't have room to receive. I can hear you say it right now. Make room, make room, make room, make room, make room, make room, make room. Make room. I'm thankful this morning that you would wake us up Clothed in our right mind. We have the activity over our limbs. You have given us peace that surpasses all understanding. Thank you for your shalom. Decrease me this morning as you give the increase. I'm not sufficient of myself. All sufficiency lies on the inside of you. So I'm seeking you this morning. You said if I seek you. Oh, Lord, I will find you. You said if I knock, the door shall be open. Come on, open the door. You, Lord, hallelujah, and bless your name this morning. We're coming in the spirit of Elijah. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Because it's not by power nor by might, but it's by your spirit. And I will forever give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And it's in the mighty, 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 mighty name. Of Yeshua HaMashiach, I pray. Amen, 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 and amen. Oh, Lord. Oh, the Spirit is all over this room today. Hallelujah and glory to your name, Lord. Help me to sit in this chair. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Because I'm in expectation. I don't know where y'all at, but I'm in expectation. So the method style of study. As the process of studying the word of Ahaya, Asha, Ahaya, which is I am, that I am in Hebrew, the great I am, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we seek his guidance and live in a kingdom lifestyle, the Torah, God's teachings and instructions and 613 principles is where the creator speaks, mother. And then we search the witnesses through the books of the prophets, the never ends, and the books of the writings, the Ketavis. Collectively, the Torah, the never ends, and the Ketavis are identified as the Tanakh. Or as some refer to it, the Old Testament, which is the only book that Yeshua studied in reference throughout the New Testament. Exodus. Chapter 16, verse 16. 
This is the living. Oh, excuse me. This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating, and over for every man according to the number of your persons. Take ye every man for them which are in his tents. Today, we look to the words Omer, Hebrews 6 0 1 6. Omer, a dry measure of one tenth. Ephod, about two liters a chef. The Torah testifies, Exodus chapter 16, verse 32. And Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord commanded. Fill an omer of it to be kept for your generations, that they may see the bread wherewith I have fed you in the wilderness when I brought you forth from the land of Egypt. Oh Lord, the Most High has spoken. We have completed the Method style of study this morning, reviewing Omer. First, we recognize the standard set in the Torah in 613 principles. Then we search the witnesses in the books of the prophets, the Nevi'ims, and the books of the writing, the Ketavims. Collectively, the Torah, the Nevi'ims, and the Ketavims are identified as the Tanakh, which is the Old Testament's proper title. And it's the only book that Yeshua studied and referenced throughout the New Testament. 5 a.m. prayer. As we begin our count of the days up to Shavuot, we, with every step we take, we are walking out of Egypt towards our promised land. Ooh. What you say? Ooh. Friday in prayer. As we begin our count of the days up to Shavuot, with every step we take, we are walking out of Egypt towards our promised land. Leviticus chapter 23 verse 15. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheep of wave offering, seven Sabbath shall be complete. Shalom, Alekim. Peace be unto you, 5 a.m. prayer community. This is our time. In the wilderness from our exodus that was observed at Passover, we are being built into his community and nation. What you say? Ooh. All right now. Hallelujah. So the song of Moses is Songs chapter 90. Hallelujah. And bless your name. I can't see nothing on the screen. It's shifted. Thank you. Songs chapter 90 in its entirety. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth in the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and sayest, return ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as a sleep in the morning. They are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourishes, it groweth up. And in the evening it is cut down and withered. For we are consumed by thy anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. And if by reason of strength, they are, they be fourscore years, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Who knoweth 
the power of thy anger, even according to thy fear. So is thou wrath. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Return, O oh Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servant. O oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou has afflicted us and the years wherein we have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servant and thy glory unto their children and let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish thou the work of our hands upon us. Yea, the work of our hands. Establish thou it. Oh Lord, that is the song of Moses in Psalms chapter 90 because he knew it was time for him to understand the counting of the days. The counting on the Most High and the things he had did for them as they came out of Egypt. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So when we count the Omer, we read from Psalms 119, eight verses a day. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 16 because we are on day two. What you say? Psalms 119. Bless are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thou commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thou righteous judgments. I will keep thou statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Wherewith thou shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Home, oh, oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O oh Lord. Teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Oh Lord, hallelujah. Mm. Teach us how to number our days. Teach us how to count up. So now, are you ready for the word of God, the father of Abraham, the father of Isaac, the father of Jacob? You better come on, Holy Ghost. Are you ready for the word of God, the father of Abraham? The father of Isaac, the father of Jacob. This morning, we are coming out of the book of Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 23 in its entirety. Again, this morning, we are coming out of the book of Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 23 in its entirety, and it reads, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, 
concerning the feast of the Lord. You better come on. Which he shall proclaim to be a holy convocation. Even these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest, a holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. And the 14th day of the first month at eve is the lord's passover and on the 15th day of the same month is a feast of unleavened bread unto the lord seven days ye must eat unleavened bread and the first day ye shall have a holy convocation ye shall do no civil work therein but ye shall offer an offering made by fire until the Lord seven days and the seventh day is a holy convocation. Ye shall do no civil work therein. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, when ye be come into the land which I give unto you and ye shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priests and ye shall weigh the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it, and it shall offer, and ye shall offer that day, when ye shall wave the sheep and, and he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. And the meat offering thereof shall be two tenth deal, a fine flour mingled with oil, and an offering made by fire unto the Lord for a sweet savor. Oh Lord. And the drink offering thereof shall be of wine, the fourth part of a hen. And ye shall eat neither bread, nor porch corn, nor green ears unto the same self day that ye have brought an offering unto the most high God. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations and all your dwelling place. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheep of wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be completed even unto the morrow. After the seventh Sabbath, ye shall number, ye shall number 50 days and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. You better come on, shovel oat. Ye shall bring out of your habitation two wave loaves of two tenth deals. They shall be a fine flour. They shall be taken with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. Come on, most high, and ye shall offer with the bread seven lambs without blemish of the first year, and one young bullock and two rams. They shall be for a burnt offering unto the Lord with their meat offering and their drink offering, even an offering made by fire what of a sweet savor unto the Lord then ye shall sacrifice one kid of the goats for a sin offering and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice of peace offering and the priests shall wave them with the bread of the first fruit uh, for a wave offering before the Lord with the two lambs they shall be holy to the Lord for the priests and ye shall proclaim on the same, on the self same day, that it may be a holy convocation unto you. Ye shall do no civil work therein. It shall be a statue forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. And when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make clean radiance of the corners of thy field. When thou reapest, neither shalt thou gather any gleaning of thy harvest. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor and to the strangers. I am the Lord your God. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a memorial 
of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. Ye shall do no civil work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, and ye shall do no work in the same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make an atonement for you, but for the Lord your God. For whosoever soul it be that shall not afflict in that same day, he shall be cut off. From among his people. And whatsoever so it be. That doeth any work. In that same day. The same soul. Will I destroy. From among his people. Ye shall do no matter of work. It shall be a statue. Forever. Throughout your generations. And all your dwellings. It shall be unto you. A Sabbath of rest. And ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at Eve. For Eve unto Eve shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles. For seven days unto the Lord on the first day shall be an holy convocation. Ye shall do no civil work therein. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you. And ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly and ye shall do no civil work therein. These are the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice and a drink offering, everything upon his day. Besides the Sabbath of the Lord and besides your gifts and besides all your vows and besides all your free will offerings, which ye Give unto the Lord. Also, in the fifteenth day of the month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs and goodly trees, branches and palm trees, and boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brooks, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days and ye shall keep it a feast until the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statue forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Ye shall dwell in booth seven days. All that are Israelite born shall dwell in booth that your generation may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booth when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feast of the Lord. And Moses declared to the children of Israel the feast of the Lord. May the Most High add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his most holy word. Scroll down. Mm -mm. Up the other way. Hallelujah. Woo! And bless your name this morning, the Most High. Hallelujah! And bless your name this morning, the Most High. The relation of Pentecost to Passover. Mm -mm 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 -mm. The relation of Pentecost to Passover. The feast of Shavuot. Is kept on the 15th day, counting from the offering of the feast of first fruits. It is one of these three feasts in the year when all males were to appear before the Most High. The feast marks the end of the grain harvest and the wheat harvest in particular.
The grain harvest of the year started with the raw green ear of barley, which were ripe, reaped after Passover and finished with baked wheat, bread loaves, which were offered before the Most High at this celebration. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, when ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheep of first fruit of your harvest unto the priest, and he shall wave the sheep before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it, and ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye bought the sheep of wave offering, seven Sabbaths, shall be completed even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number 50 days and ye shall offer a new meal offering unto the most high. Leviticus chapter 23 verse 10 then drop down to 15 through 17. As we look at these verses we see the first fruit of two separate harvests separated by 50 days. You better come on and count up an expectation. As we look at these verses, we see the first fruits of two separate harvests separated by 50 days. The first harvest mentioned refers to the first fruits of the barley harvest, which also took place on the first day, the morrow after the Sabbath, following the Passover. On this day, the priest Wave the first fruit of the barley harvest before the Most High in anticipation of the remainder of the wheat harvest yet to come at Shavuot, or as the church calls it, Pentecost. The Feast of Shavuot literally means weeks, which the New Testament calls Pentecost, Greek for the 50th day. This is the second harvest mentioned in our passage from Leviticus chapter 23. The whole period from the first fruits until the actual day of the Feast of Shavuot, the seven weeks were linked by the counting of the Omer and regarded as a continuous festive season. What you say? As a continuous festive season. The feast was also called the Feast of Harvest. Oh yeah, it's harvest time. It's harvest time. The feast was also called the Feast of Harvest. Exodus chapter 23, verse 16. The Feast of Weeks in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 15. The Day of First Fruit, Fruits, Numbers chapter 28, verse 26. In addition to the offering, the loaves of wheat, the Israelites brought the first fruits of the six other products of the promised land, which were their tithes and free will offering according to his blessing upon them. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 10, drop down to 17. During the second temple period, everyone gathered together in their home, hometown and slept the night. In the town streets, they didn't enter homes to prevent being exposed to impurities. In the morning, the overseer would walk among the people saying, Get up! Let us go into the house of Zion, to the house of the Lord our God. Those in Jerusalem area would join in a procession carrying fresh dates, pomegranates and grape that those at the back would carry dry fruit, figs and raisins and pomegranates. Each family bought two loaves of fine bread. The seven products are listed in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 8 where the Most High described Israel as a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates a land of olive oil and date honey. Oh Lord! The Mishnah described how the Israelites brought these into the temple in an elaborate procession that included flute playing, dancing and singing and 
oxen decorated with their horns overlaid with gold, wearing olive leaf uh, wreaths and gold and silver covered baskets to hold the fruit. It was a time of great festivities and commemorated their visitation by the Most High at Mount Sinai and the covenant he made with them there. What you say? The offering. You shall bring out of your habitation two wave loaves of tenth deals. They shall be a fine flour. They shall be baked with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the most high God. Leviticus chapter 23 verse 17. A wave offering of two loaves of leaven bread was to be offered to the most high. The bread was to be made from new grain of the wheat crop. Come on now and eat from a measure of Egyptian origin and contain 10 omers. An omer is about two quarts, so it would be approximately four quarts of flour. Four quarts of four cups. Each is about 16 cups of fine flour. They would make the loaves approximately 12 by 21 by three. Very large loaves, three. Other offerings were required. Burnt offering, seven male lambs, one young bull, and two rams, as well as a grain and drink offering. Sin offering, one male goat. And fellowship offering, two lambs, the lambs and the bread, were a sacred offering for the priests. And all the worshipers joined together in a festive meal of the offering that were brought into the temple. This was a feast, a festive Sabbath, and a sacred assembly, a holy convocation on which no regular work was done. In the regular daily meal offering, no leaven or honey were permitted. Nothing leaven could be offered with blood sacrifices on the altar. Leviticus chapter 2 verse 11. Leviticus chapter 6, verse 14 through 17. But this offering is to be with leaven. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 15 through 21. Numbers chapter 28, verse 26 through 31. Leaven is an agent that is pervasive in its nature with a capacity to transform another substance and change its nature. Mm. In the process, it causes it to increase, creating a lighter and better quality texture. This templifies the action of the Holy Spirit in us. The coming of the Holy Spirit works in us to change us from our inherit Adamic nature to that of a divine nature. The fire of the Holy Spirit in our lives arrests the action of impurity in our flesh nature and purges out the dross, permeating through our lives with his presence to bring us to the perfection and purity of Mashiach. Matthew chapter 13, verse 33. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27. The number 2, two loaves represent the number of spiritual witness. As two of a kind in agreement is a witness. Oh Lord, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, everything is established. Matthew chapter 18, verse 16 and 20. And from Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 15, the Most High Himself wrote the Torah law on two tablets of stone. The two loaves symbolize the two witnesses which the Most High has established for Himself in Judah and Ephraim. The two houses of Israel in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 10, and particularly verse 12. Who Lord, through all your getting, get an understanding. Oh, April, you better come on in here. We're teaching on counting up the Omer to shovel out. Who Lord, 
the old and the new covenant. The old and the new covenant. Shavuot is the anniversary of the giving of the Torah when he wanted them to enter into his covenant. Oh, Lord. Shavuot is the anniversary of the giving of the Torah when he wanted them to enter into his covenant. It accords with the 50 days from their exodus from Egypt on Nisan 15 and their arrival in Sinai after the third new moon. <coughs> Excuse me. Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. Exodus chapter 19, verse 1. The outpouring, oh Lord, of the Holy Spirit upon the first messianic believers in Jerusalem was on this same day. And when the day of Pentecost, Shavuot, was fully come, they, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. Yeshua remained on earth for 40 days after the resurrection. You better start counting. Yeshua remained on earth 40 days after the resurrection. And Acts Chapter 1, verse 3. On the day of his assertion, he instructed his disciples to wait in Jerusalem for this baptism of the Holy Spirit. In Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Ten days after that. Ten days after that. On Shavuot, the anniversary of the giving of the Torah for the covenant, the Most High came again by his spirit and his blazing glory as he had done at Mount Sinai. But this time he wrote his commandments not upon tablets of stone, but upon the fleshly tablets of men's heart. As the prophets have foretold in his spirit, Spiritual manifestation were in and upon his human tabernacles of flesh. You better read Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 31 through 34. And Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 19, 20 and Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 6. What? Ezekiel chapter 6 verse 26. Oh Lord. At the time the Torah was given. The sin of the golden calf caused about 3,000 men to be killed. Exodus chapter 32 verse 28. On the day the spirit was given, the preaching of Peter caused about 3,000 souls to be found new life in Messiah. You better look at Shavuot and know where it comes from. Oh, Lord, I think I want to count up now. At the time the Torah was given, the sin of the golden calf caused about 3,000 men to be killed. In Exodus chapter 32, verse 28, on the day the spirit was given, the preaching of Peter caused about 3,000 souls to find new life in Mashiach. Acts chapter 2, verse 41. This is an excellent illustration of the fact that the letter of the law kills, but the spirit gives life. 
2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. The response of the people at Sinai to the giving of the Torah was to say, All that the Most High has spoken, we will do. Exodus chapter 19, verse 8. Which they found themselves powerless to do in their own strength, having drawn back from the powerful manifestation of his presence. Exodus chapter 20, verse 19. At Shavuot, or Pentecost, at the outpouring of the Spirit, the people had a different response. They said, men and brethren, what shall we do? In Acts chapter 2, verse 37, to which Peter replies, repent! And let every one of you be baptized in the name of Yeshua, the Mashiach, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Which they did in verse 41. And they received the empowering of the Spirit to keep the covenant. Why were you endowed with the Holy Spirit? To keep the commandments of the Most High. Wow! And they receive the empowering of the Spirit to keep the covenant. Mm. The number 50 is used symbolically in Scripture to represent liberty, freedom, and deliverance. Jubilee! The number 50 is used symbolically and scripture to represent liberty, freedom, and deliverance. Every 50th year was a jubilee, a year of release, where slaves were set free and captives loosed and debts canceled. Oh, Lord. For the nation of Israel, after their deliverance from Egypt, it was to be a celebration of liberty from the house of bondage. They were now at liberty to serve the Most High. For the new covenant believers, the day of Pentecost, Shavuot, meant liberty and freedom from the power of sin. It meant that they were at liberty to serve him, not in the oldness of the letter, but in the newness of the spirit. Liberty, however, does not mean license. You do not have a license to sin. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 and Romans chapter 6 verse 19. As believers in Israel's Mashiach, we are to obey the Torah. However, we are to obey in the new way provided by the Spirit and not in the old way of outwardly following the letter of the law. Ooh, it's written on my heart and on my mind. Romans chapter 7, verse 6. The new way does not mean a different set of laws. The new way does not mean a different set of laws. It means obeying the Torah from the heart. It means obeying the Torah from the heart. This is the new way provided by the Spirit. And this is the blessing of Shavuot, Pentecost, at Mount Sinai was the giving of the law, Torah, written on two tablets of stone. That and that was the old covenant. We have come to Mount Sinai. Which is the writing of the Torah on fleshly tablets of the heart. And this is the new covenant. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 31 through 34. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 7 through 13. And Hebrews chapter 12 verse 22 through 24. At Sinai we have Moses with fire, darkness, trumpet voice, quaking, fire, and lightning. At Zion, the heavenly Jerusalem, we have Yeshua, tongues of fire, rushing mighty wind, shaking and conviction. At Sinai, the pattern was given for the earthly tabernacle with the Aaronic priesthood, 
What you say? Come on now. Through all y'all getting, get an understanding. At Sinai, the pattern was given for the earthly tabernacle with the Aaronic priesthood. And at Pentecost, the pattern of the spiritual tabernacle, the body of Messiah, a kingdom priesthood, the priesthood of all believers after the order of Melchizedek, the new covenant assembly as a redeemed and holy nation approaches the most high through the perfection of Mashiach Yeshua by the spirit. Oh Lord. First Peter chapter two, verse five through nine. Revelations chapter 1 verse 6. Revelations chapter 5 verse 9 through 10. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Hallelujah. And bless your name Lord. Hallelujah. And bless your name Lord. The betrothal and the covenant. What you say? The betrothal and the covenant, oh Lord, shove out. It's a time when the Most High enter into the marriage covenant with Israel, both at Sinai and renewed again in Jerusalem in 30 AD, the seven weeks between Passover and Pentecost symbolizes the time a bride to be in biblical culture counts in preparation for consummation of her marriage when she sealed with the oh Lord when she sealed when she drank the cup of the covenant at her betrothal. What? Where you at? Where you at? What? The bride counts up. The bride is counting. What you say, Abram? The bride counts up. Where did this come from? I don't know. I was searching and searching and searching and searching and searching and searching and searching for a word. And this is what the Most High gave me. Where you at? Who Lord? Woo, Lord! Oh my goodness, I can't. <laughs> what? The betrothal and the covenant. Shavuot is the time when the Most High entered into the marriage covenant with Israel both at Mount Sinai and renewed again at Jerusalem in 30 AD. The seven weeks between Passover and Shavuot symbolizes the time a bride to be in biblical culture counts in preparation for the consummation of her marriage which she sealed when she drank the cup of the covenant at her betrothal. Oh Lord. The covenant of the law was the most high's ketubah. Terms of the marriage agreement. What you say? The covenant of the law of the most high's ketubah. Terms of the marriage agreement with Israel, which he presented to her at their betrothal at Mount Sinai. Exodus chapter 19, verse 6 through 8. The Most High presented to his bride to be the terms of their marriage contract to which she agreed. When the Most High God entered into this covenant of marriage with Israel at Sinai, there were great manifestations of his presence to demonstrate his commitment to his covenant. In John chapter 20, verse 19 through 20. We are told that the same day of his resurrection on the feast of first fruits, Yeshua came to the disciples and, and he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. This was the occasion of the initial impartation to the disciples where they had their first taste of the wine of the spirit of the new betrothal contract. What you say? 
after their seven days, actual weeks of examining the covenant, 40 days of walking and talking with him, ending in their waiting upon him in the upper room. They entered into the full terms of the contract at Shavuot and the new covenant assembly was birthed. Where you at? Who oh, Lord? Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. This was a renewed of the covenant with Israel established on better promises. The new contract of betrothal included the impartation of the Spirit who would write the Torah, his principles on their hearts. So also the Feast of Shavuot represents our betrothal to Messiah on a personal level, level our act. Our betrothal was when we accepted Yeshua as Messiah and Lord. All that the Lord has spoken, I will do. As our bridegroom, Yeshua made a promise to us that he would keep covenant with us by sending the spirit of the Father as a seal of his promise. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will send you a helper who will teach you all things. So... Also, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14, one day we will experience the full redemption of our bodies and consummate our marriage covenant with Messiah. In the meantime, the Most High God has given us his spirit as a pledge, a promise that he will never leave us or forsake us. He will always be with us, even until the end of this age. In fact, it was during this feast that we enter into the deeper fullness of the Holy Spirit when he promises to empower us. Shavuot is a feast of power. Shavuot is a feast of power. As a bride of Messiah, the Most High God has given to us his authority and power to fulfill his purpose for us as a bride. Prophetically, the story of Ruth is a picture of the Most High's purpose and longing for the house of Judah and the house of Ephraim. Believers to be joined together as one new man in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 11 through 22 and Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 15 through 28. For this reason, the book of Ruth is often read at this time. Boaz is a type of kinsman redeemer who accepts Ruth in a marriage relationship after her identification with Naomi returning to the land, you better come on most high. The resurrection. <laughs> the resurrection. Messiah was the first fruit offering okay. from the earth. Presented to the Father after his resurrection of redeemed man. He was the first to be raised a first fruit son. The first of a new order of Adam, a second man. Shavuot is a prophetic fulfillment of the harvest to come from the earth of the seed that was sown of his life. Oh Lord, there is to be future first fruit offering of sons who come to maturity brought to perfection by the power of the spirit i am the first fruits the representative two houses of israel are the two loaves that will be produced of the earth's spiritual harvest to be presented to the father from the seed of his life which he had sown into the earth these two loaves permeates with the qualities of the indwelling spirit or the offerings to be presented to him at the final shovel. 
The outpouring of the Spirit was given as a first fruit to his body, an initial deposit of the fullness yet to be realized at the final harvest. Thus, it was given to prepare and to bring the wheat to maturity, ready for that harvest. In the upper room, there were 120 souls who were filled with the Holy Spirit on that day. 120 is symbolic to the number of the end of all flesh and templifies the purifying work of the Holy Spirit to effect the end of all flesh and the final harvest first fruit company. Oh, Lord. John chapter 12, verse 24. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Drop down to verse 26. Romans chapter 8, verse 23. James chapter 1, verse 18. The initial outpouring of the Holy Spirit was the earthly rain that promise. The spring rain that Hosea chapter 6 verse 1 through 3 talks about. That Joel chapter 2 verse 21 through 29 talks about. Of the times of refreshing that had been prophesied, the final harvest was required. The latter rain at the end of the prophetic year, which was symbolized by the feast of the seventh month. We look forward to the day when we will when we will put off this mortal body and be clothed with that immortal, incorruptible house of our spirit man, for which purpose we have the spirit as guaranteed in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 through 5, and Romans chapter 8, verse 23. Israel then was told, count the days from Passover to Shavuot. The 50 days between are the prophetic of the final jubilee of release from mortal corruptible bodies and all that has resulted from the fall of Adam. We now should count our days and redeem them for him till he returns to take us for himself. In Matthew chapter 13 verse 24 through 30, drop down to to 36 through 43, Yeshua gives us the parable of the wheat and the tear. This is a prophecy of the end of the age and of his second coming. The good seed of wheat represents the children of the kingdom. The wheat harvest represents the end of the world. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 14 through 16, the grain harvest of, of believers is indicated. While in Revelation chapter 14, verse 20, the harvest of grapes or wrath indicates the harvest of unbelievers and those that do evil. Every time a believer receives the Holy Spirit in baptism, he has his own shovel oat within him as a continuous feast and a time of rejoicing before the Most High. This is a personal personal application of the feast where on a daily basis the Holy Spirit sanctifies us and prepares us to be presented faultless before the throne of God at the final harvest. Jude chapter 24. <coughs> Excuse me. The day of the feast climaxes the seven weeks of counting the omer, of feeding on the heavenly manna in spiritual preparation and expectation of this appointed meeting time with the Most High. This period marked the passage through the wilderness with all its trials and testings after being redeemed to bring his people to the mountaintop experience with himself where they receive their betrothal covenant. What you say, Minister Taylor? Welcome to your mountaintop experience. For us today, it 
is a commemoration of the covenant which he made with him individually at our initial spiritual birth. We remember and rededicate our lives once again seeking a fresh infilling of his spirit to once again experience the tongues of fire manifesting his presence to us and a fresh anointing and power tarrying in the upper room prior to the feast may be needed to prepare for this as did the disciples and the early church the day of Shavuot is to be to be observed as a holy convocation on which there was to be no laborious work they were to be gathered together for the occasion the word uh, convocation. convocation means a calling together the word convocation means a calling together after the dispersion in 70 AD, Hebrews came from all over the world for this feast in Jerusalem. Acts chapter 2, verse 15, verse 5 through 11, dropped down to 20 through 16. It was customary to keep the night of the feast as a prayer visual with the regarding, with the reading of the scriptures, particularly those re relating to the original covenant at Sinai. Back Baptisms were often performed on this occasion of new believers, others seeking the fullness of the spirit. The night ended with celebratory meals and the breaking of bread. It was a day of rejoicing. They were commanded to rejoice. They were commanded to rejoice. They were commanded to rejoice. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 9 through 12. This forms the pattern for spirit-filled worship. What you say? This forms a pattern for spirit-filled worship. It was originally a harvest festival or Thanksgiving day for, for his blessings and which they bought in their tithes and their free will offerings. Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 10. We today offer our talents, abilities, and gifts in the spiritual temple of the Most High under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and rejoice in our expectation of eternal life and the kingdom to come. It is also a time to consider the poor and make provision for them. What you say? It is also a time to consider the poor and make provision for them. Leviticus chapter 23 verse 22. The Most High instructed the Hebrews not to harvest the corners of their fields and to leave the gleaning for their harvest for those in need. The yearly observing of this biblical memorial day by the assembling of the most high serves to remind us of our total dependence upon the Holy Spirit to give us the guidance and anointing we must have to bring in the spiritual harvest of the earth. The apostle Peter referred to it is as time of refreshing what you say? The apostle Peter referred to it is it as a time of refreshing. And Yeshua said that this was the means whereby they would receive the power to witness to his resurrection power. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Every year, Shavuot is the precious time. For us to renew our covenant relationship with the Most High as his bride. We can do so by rededicating ourselves anew and giving time to study of the Torah as well as in worship and praise for his fulfilled covenantal promise of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Paul kept. The feast of Shavuot with believers. Amen, 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 and amen. Who we? Come on up in here, Pastor Lucinda. Come on in here, Pastor Lucinda Wagner. Hallelujah. And bless your name, Most High. Thank you for understanding. 
Why it's so important to teach your feast days. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Teach us how to number our days. We're counting up to Shavuot. Walking in the feast of unleavened bread. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Amazing revelation. This is progressive revelation. The progressive revelation. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Are you kidding me? Too much what's going on too much wow I'm, I'm listening to this teaching dr j and i'm like all this comes together where was we at when we were sitting in the pew where were we where were we i'm like it just consecutive it's consecutive had no clue for myself, I thought all of it was different. I thought it was different. It didn't have a connection. All this has a connection. Yes. I'm like, okay, Most High, you blew my mind this morning. I mean, woo. I said, now we we getting patrolled to the Most High, and it was, it was a lot going on in this Passover period of time. It was a lot going on. His oh kutuba my. is being written right. Yes. Woo. I said, I need a Selah mm -hmm. moment. Hold on a minute, Fabio. I need a Selah moment. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. Pastor Lucinda. I don't know, Dr. J. <sighs> Pastor Lucinda. Mm. <laughs> you were searching out there. You were searching out a lot, girl. That was powerful. I guess become part of becoming a leader is knowing where you at. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> we'll get to the book probably in May. And that's okay. <laughs> okay. I need the knowledge. <clears throat> what the world? I said, okay, Most High, I need a moment. My, my heart is like racing right now, for real. I'm Pastor get up, Lucinda. I'm going to get up out this chair and run out the door. I mean, literally. Pastor Lucinda. Yes. I know. Ooh. I said, Most High, it's a lot. <laughs> so guess what? The title for my clothes, and he gave me a title this morning, is Lasting Lessons. Mm -hmm. We're going through some lasting lessons. What is to be learned? Mm -hmm. I said, what? Because I don't have no clue what lasting lessons. I'm like, okay, what lessons are you trying to teach us now? Because I'm tired. He said, I'm trying to teach you that everything was consecutive. It was not separated out. All this happened. Could you imagine why they were so tired? If all this was happening, all you could do is sit down in the wilderness because it was a lot going on. Oh my goodness. Ooh, I said lasting lessons. I said, okay. We're going to roll with that, Most High. Now, when you was teaching, that comes into play. You have to have some lasting lessons. You got to know where you are what you are doing and why. Right. So when you was talking about Pentecost, like so Pentecost was connected to Passover, which was connected to the unleavened bread, which was connected to being married to Christ, which was connected to the Torah. So I'm trying to get this, all this in my head of the will. That's it's continuous. Yes. His feast. And if you're not doing the feast days, you're not in relationship with him. Mm. No wonder we don't know him. 
Who is Jesus? Amen. Amen. Oh, who is he, Dr. J? I'm he, serious. He's continuously teaching us who he is. Oh, Lord. That was a lot. That was a lot. Mm, the second April, day of... I'm falling out with you, girl. <laughs> oh, wow. This was so packed. It was so good. Yes, it was. I mean, it was it was packed. It was it was really good. Lord. It was. Oh, <laughs> yeah, my husband too, April. I get it, girl. <laughs> I just oh man, Woo. Oh Lord, I can't. Pastor Lucinda, huh? So, Just come on with that Ronnie blessing. He said we can't even add nothing to this. Right I can't. We can't add nothing uh -huh. to this. I don't know what you. Well, I don't even know what you want me to add to it. My <laughs> choice <laughs> is just sitting there. Pastor Lucinda, <laughs> we gonna have to do this again tomorrow. Yeah, cause I, 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 I don't. <laughs> I know when to shut up. Okay. I'm learning. <laughs> well, I'm gonna say after that, right? Come on, girl. I'm trying to embarrass myself. Oh Lord. What I'm saying. That was powerful. All Patricia. I can say today. That was powerful. Lasting lessons. And we're gonna resume lasting lessons on tomorrow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what we're gonna do. Woo. There you go. Oh God. Okay. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. As stipulated in the Torah, mm. the Koanim, the priest, we have a special duty to raise our hands and bless the people. And the Most High promises that I will place my name on their hands and bless them. Wherever I cause my name to be honored, I will come to you and bless you. And that's with the gift of be quiet. Amen. Amen. So his hands lifted that I pray. The Most High would kneel before you presenting gifts and guard you with the hand of protection. The Most High will illuminate the wholeness of his being towards you, bringing order, and he will beautify you. The Most High will lift up his wholeness of being and look upon you, and he will set in place. I know that's right. He will set in place. <laughs> All you need to be whole and complete. Because y'all need a Selah moment this morning. Yes! For real. Please. You want to see that lesson. Please. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Amen. Because I don't Amen. Know. Amen. It, it ain't nothing else to say, Dr. J. It's, mm -mm. Ain't nobody can come behind that with a commentary, because I got my commentary. You know I do. I got the explanation of all that you said, but I need a say that moment. We need me to too. Me too. Mm -mm. That was too much. Mm -mm. <laughs> Amen. That's all I can say is I agree, man. Oh my goodness. Because you got this look on your face. Go back and look at yourself. You got this look on your face. It's like Pastor Lucinda. I, you know, I don't know. There was so much meat in that mm. message this morning. And then you look at surprise like, this was the most I gave me? I don't ever read before. <laughs> he gave it to me. He gave it to you. I read it this morning <laughs> with you. I'm glad he don't let me read before. Yes. Amen. All right, Mary, Amen. say la. That's all I got this morning. Say la. That's oh, good. man. I love you, love you, love you. I Ooh. love you, love you, love you too. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. I know. I'm so glad you invited me in. Thank you so much. <laughs> 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 what you want me to say? 
You right. The ironic blessing. That's all I got for you this morning. Because it's too much. It, we, we, got to, we got to soak this in first. Before we I got to soak the, in that. With the explanation that of all. To play, oh God, oh. That needs to play in our hearing all day today. Yes. You need to have that thing on yes. repeat. It needs to just be going over and over again. Yes. Because I'm like, I don't know. Musa, no, we, we can explain tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Please let me explain. I I don't have nothing to say today. (laughs) You got to know when to shut up. Lasting lessons. You got to know when to shut up. Please share this video, everybody. Share this video. Oh, my goodness. Oh, let me do my. So good. It was really, really, really good. It was really good. There we go. All right. Amen. Have a blessed day. Okay. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Who I know that's right. <laughs> Thank you. I'll receive Bye you now. now. I love you, love you, love, love you. Love you, love you. Bye, Bye now. now. Oh, Lord. Go, girl.
Oh, Lord. You talking about mind being blown? My mind is blown. Because if you guys really knew how tired I was yesterday and what was taking place, I knew we had to study out the Omar counting up. Uh, we was on day two. I knew, but I knew we had to bring a teaching this morning. So I had Z on a computer, on a desktop going to town. I had Shay searching out a word. They was like, okay, this is, this is, this is, this We were going round and round and round. And I was telling them, nope, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. Then the most I said, boop, here you go, Dr. J. This is teaching for tomorrow. Huh? Huh? My mind is blown. Y'all go back and listen to this. Share this video. Go back and listen over and over again. I'm counting up in expectation. For real. This time. I'm ready for my release. I don't know about you. I'm counting up in expectation. So get to the blog spot. Get to Facebook. Oh, it will encourage you today. It will. And also, you can find us on YouTube. I love you, love you, love you. Ooh, I love you. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> <sighs> Bye now. So good. So, so good.